Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a person who is from New York, but they're currently in Montana because they're working on a project there. Now, this person is a multidisciplinary artist, a multimedia artist. I actually asked the question during the interview about what's the difference between those two, because I'm not sure which one I'm, I'm saying if I'm supposed to say one or the other, or if I can say both, if that's okay. Anyway, that's not important. We talk about it on the show. Uh, they work in uh, different sort of objects that are from the world, objects that uh, can't be recycled, so they turn them into art. Things like uh, aluminum blinds, they sculpt those, but also they are currently moving over into clay and uh, sculpture in that sort of manner, but their background is also in working with fabrics, with uh, textiles, with garments, and they actually have a job in the garment industry working for different companies. And we uh, talk about what those companies are a little bit on the show as well. So here is the interview with this artist starting right now. My name is Kate Russick. Um, I'm an artist, uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, I work in sculpture, in sculpture and in uh, textiles. And hot take: I now am working in clay. More recently, oh. um, kind of bringing back that, um, bringing that perspective into these materials um, and into this medium uh, in a really intuitive kind of way. It feels like a really natural progression to kind of. Um, think through my hands in this way. So. And where are you located right now? <laughs> currently? Yes, currently. Um, currently I, know. <laughs> I am I am in residence at the Archie Bray Foundation in Helena, Montana. Okay. Um, I'm here for the summer as a summer resident. Um, this is sort of a clay mecca for this medium. And it feels really, really special that I get to be here, particularly as I just described. Um, I'm relatively new to clay compared to the like the titans of this place and in the uh, of of working in clay and pottery. Um, so I feel really, really lucky and special to be here. But origin or most of the time, um, my studio is in Queens, New York, okay. in Astoria. Um, and so I live and work there. Currently, um, the western winds are kind of blowing and I'm, I'm all over the place right now, um, just kind of following the work uh, in residencies and um, uh, taking taking the space and the time to be in the places that really, really inspire me. Yeah. And when we were setting up this interview, you were in the process of moving from the East to uh, the mountains, I guess. I don't know how to, I don't, I've rarely <laughs> spoken to people that have been in mountain time. Uh, so I guess yeah. I don't know where to refer to what to refer to that section as. Interesting. I mean, it's, it's mountain time. It's sort of yeah. where the continental divide of our country is. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's it, the line is somewhere in the Dakotas to about Idaho. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, the Rockies, it's Colorado. It's it's the whole state of Montana, which is gigantic. One of my favorite, um, I don't travel the U.S. that much, but one of my favorite drives was going through Montana. I enjoyed drive. First of all, do they still have no speed limit there? It is now posted at 80, oh, um, but well, it, feels, it feels like a loose 80. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but driving through, okay, two things happened to me. I'm going to digress here in just a minute. But when I was driving there, um, just driving along the mountains, n just lovely colors of like, th there were like rainbows in the cliffs, uh, yeah. you know, colors. And like, all of a sudden you'd look down and there would just be some random like, uh, a, a camper that looked like it was straight out of a John Waters film or something, just like in the middle of nowhere. And then I looked up and a bug hit my windshield. And again, the bug exploded into rainbow colors. Like what bug hit my windshield that it did? I had to pull over and wipe it off because I couldn't see. There was so much on the windshield, <laughs> but it was a fascinating drive. I really enjoy. I wish I could have spent more time there. So how did you end up yeah. there? You said it was, it was through a, a it, it, you got a grant or yeah, a, so so artists, I mean, we're uh, frequently like pursuing some opp these opportunities to kind of be in different spaces, different yeah. studios, um, different. I mean, for me, it's really specifically about being in different landscapes and this sort of idea of being in different geologies, um, because the natural world is such a big part of my um, my sort of conceptual uh, approach to my work. Um, I, you know, I work, I'm working so much about uh, in like materiality and um, sort of intuitive spaces, but at the same time, the, those things are activated by the places I'm in. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I am a like deep, deep lover of the natural world. I mean, whatever that, 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 that is a really fluid meaning these days. Um, but you know, the living world, the non-human world, um, the, you know, the environment in which like we have such an influence upon, um, but is still persisting on its own in these like cycles of regeneration and like abundant growth and, uh, they sync with the, what we're doing as like a human society and sometimes not. Um, and, but we'll always kind of be in their own rhythms. Um, so for me, like a lot of the residencies and the opportunities I'm pursuing is to like put myself in the places, um, where I feel really, really inspired, where I can sort of quiet my mind, where mm-hmm. I can then from there really tune in and kind of be this receptor for these ideas and, textures and sounds and colors like you were just describing i mean we have (laughs) i work in a studio right now where we like sit on the porch uh facing the sunset every day and watch the sun like drop below the mountains in montana and they're not the biggest mountains they're not the most like you know um you know dramatic but this the light out here is wild like completely like the perception of light and color is just wholly different than anywhere I've ever been. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the opportunity to be sort of working in place in a space like this for an extended period of time is just like an incredible gift. Yeah. And it's like, and it's also like, it's not just a gift. It almost, it feels like a need these days for me. Like I need to be in these spaces to like, kind of be able to open my mind and quiet my mind to where I can really like tune in to both what's happened, what my internal rhythms, but also these external rhythms. And they're so quiet. They need the time okay. um, to, to like really mm-hmm. sit with them. So. And you said you're out there to do sculpture, which you're saying you're new at. Um, no, I'm definitely not new to sculpture. Okay, I was going to say, oh, I've, um, I've seen your work and no, there's, yeah. so you're, <laughs> So what yeah, you I, said, you were talking as if there was something different you were doing out there. Now, what? Yeah, what, yeah. the difference, the difference is sort of this medium shift. So um, I've been, uh, I sh- have shifted pretty hard into clay in the last year. Okay. Um, so I, my practice has been sort of uh, dictated by found objects and responding to uh, found materials and the rhythms of that I can like sort of elicit um, from these materials and frequently they're like plastics and things that are sort of nefarious and like persistent and will outlast all of humanity. <laughs> okay. These kind of like, I, these are the, these are the things I'm pulling from these, from like pretty mundane objects that surround us that we've accepted as like, is pretty regular, but are really frankly, very profound and very much have this sort of vibrancy, mm-hmm. um, where they're acting in ways that, um, are almost, have their own agency, you know, plastics degrade, material accumulates, it, mm-hmm. you know, has come from the earth and is going back to the earth in pretty chaotic and unorganized ways. So there's like so much richness in, in, in like concept for me to understand our world through this work that I do. Yeah. Um, so to shift into clay um, and sort of like add that to the proverbial pot of, um, ways to understand material and form um, has been just like literally I like just like like brain exploding um, because now I have like a little bit of free a little bit more freedom to, for to use like the plasticity of the materials and sculpt a little bit more but then still kind of integrate this perspective that I bring to my whole practice um, where I'm learning about um, things that already exist or things that have been deemed valueless seems mm-hmm. things that like um, we perceive as useless, um, and then shift them into this material that has been, you know, that, you know, is become like the relics of culture, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have pottery fragments, we have, um, vessels from civilizations that have long perished. Um, and there's something really special to me about kind of working in that medium with and with the ideas and actually sometimes those actual materials that we have created in our modern society that will outlast us, will be our evidence, will be our sort of like archaeological relics mm-hmm. um, in the same, in a similar kind of way. Okay. Um, 
And yeah. the the earlier stuff that I saw, and this is just me trying to see the yeah. the transformation <laughs> into clay. Um, a lot of it that I saw from some of your earlier work was uh, things like aluminum bent into different, like very intricate, sculpted, mm-hmm. like. I guess, how would you, first of all, am I correct in thinking that was what you were doing before you started working with clay and porcelain and, and things like that? You yeah. Were, okay. Yes. That's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty accurate read. Um, okay. I, um, I am ever curious. And so my, the way my practice work is, works is that I'm frequently working in a few different streams at once. So mm-hmm. that series of aluminum okay. work. All right. Is ongoing. <laughs> okay, still happening. And also, sort of, like, how do I yeah. would not, how do you do that? Like, I have a hard time putting together like uh, when I used to get those really intricate models that you would put together with glue. Like, you're not do, or maybe you're doing it with glue. I don't know. But, but trying to get this stuff to do what you're doing and wrapping around all these little loops and pieces—that's crazy. So, what's your <laughs> anyway? Tell me more about the process of making these things yeah. that would drive me mad. <laughs> yeah, so the, the aluminum series is called blind adjustment because okay. they are literally aluminum blinds. It's like oh. these, actually, there's a pair right here. Oh. Um, yeah, so they are these finicky mini blinds that like are pervasive in the built environment. Right, we see them, we forget them, and then like we move on with our days. Unless like our cat gets like jumps into the window <laughs> or they get dirty or they're you know they're not the most attractive things yeah. in our you know in our spaces. And so frequently, um, I find them all over New York City, (laughs) literally on the top of like recycling bags and like hot take. They're not recyclable because, you know, we build these things that are like plastic and metal and brass and cord, like just a few like those elements like you can't can't throw it in the can't throw it in the recycling they meant well they were like maybe this could be recycled you know aspirational (laughs) recycling is cute but not effective (laughs) i know i know (laughs) um but anyway so i am you know more broadly attracted to these these things in our world that like um have capacities right and i mean them in a sort of performative capacity not like are you on stage but in a what is this material able to do is it doing it? Probably not. Can I like sort of re- disassemble, play with it? Liter- literally like lots of play, lots of like experimentation and like, you know, thinking through hands, not sketching necessarily, not researching like, you know, um, but literally like my, my research happens through, through play. Yeah. Um, so it's an experimentation of like what things, what materials can do, Um, how they can move, how they can flex, um, potentially bend, hold tension. Those kind of things are really interesting to me because that inevitably at a point will sort of move that object or that material that I found from this like objective space into what is this? Uh (laughs) Just like you said, like, what is this? I can't quite perceive it. Is it my eye that can't perceive it or my mind that can't perceive it? Um, or what's happening here, you know, um, So I, that is like a really juicy creative space for me. And like that intrigue in, so if that is intriguing to me, like that keeps me interested and like that feels like the right path to walk down. So with these, so with the blinds, like literally started just playing with like a a single unit, like Mm -hmm. a, a singular shape and knowing that I have multiples, I have this repetition to create, um, then start, uh, combining, um, like combining more than one of these things. And then they start to sort of like self-replicate and almost like self-assemble. Yes, I've made some decisions, mm-hmm. but like it feels like a really small parameter that I set. And then I'm like, oh, this is this is going places I wasn't expecting. Okay. It's like building into forms that like I don't pre-plan um, and allow the material to tell me. So it's this sort of conversation of what can happen um, with these objects that I, you know, kind of give them more freedom to like express in a way that they, you know, don't in their like design function. Okay. But the, yeah. now what's your background in getting <laughs> up to that point? Because let me ask yeah. you this, because I always, have, I've always wanted to do collage, but whenever I do it, it looks like somebody's dog got into the garbage. Now you, yeah. you know, you, <laughs> what yeah. you're doing is even more intricate. So, you know, <laughs> how, how did you get to the point where what you just explained there 
uh, it's one thing to think it, but to do it is uh, sure. when I'm looking at those, I'm like, I, I, I just would raise my hands and walk away and I, I can't, I can't do it. So yeah. <laughs> what's the background but, uh, behind uh, how you learned and how you yeah. did these things? I think there's, there's, there are quite a few things that kind of like lead to this like temperament, I guess. Okay. Um, so I was trained as a sculptor. So, um, lots of different material explorations, process organization, skill building, like is really important to me. Um, you know, a lot of people, I, you know, I sometimes ask, I, you know, I'm getting better at asking for help. Like if I don't know how to do a thing, but I frequently like, I really just like, I want to learn it. Like I want to learn, I know how to weld and do woodworking and, um, mold making and like electrical, like those things, like I really love having in my wheelhouse. Um, and so like to be trained as a sculptor is basically, it's like you're a problem solver in materials, you know, Oh yeah, that's it. You know, it's like, if you are, you know, you might gravitate towards one material or another, but for me, it's like this curiosity to like understand how things are made so that I can then make them or then corrupt that process in some way and like, you know, kind of turn it on its head. Um, so I was trained as a sculptor. I was also trained as a costume designer. Um, and in that sort of, uh, garment and costume realm, I really, really gravitated towards the technical aspect of that. And so I am a tailor, uh, (laughs) in addition to, in addition to my, um, my, um, my artistic practice. So I, again, but it's, again, it's a similar curiosity. It's like, I want to know how things are made, how they relate to the body. Like I, I deconstruct to reconstruct, like this is how I like build, I have built that expertise. Um, so I've become this, uh, I, I work very frequently, uh, on this, you know, in, you know, sort of parallel paths with my practice as a like specialty and like very, um, traditional tailor, a special, like sort of specialty costume right. in all the weird materials, right? Like, because I can bring that from my sculpture practice. Um, and then just apply them to the body, apply them to like the way we move. Um, but then also like the fine tailoring, like skills uh, that are disappearing over time. That, like that's important to me too, to kind of like understand how things are made, but just in sort of like the textile fiber um, garment realm. And so I think a, a lot of my sort of stamina <laughs> for mm-hmm. these repetitious processes. Oh, that's a good point. From, yeah. Come from this world. Because, like, I know what it takes to build a suit from a bolt of cloth. <laughs> right. Well, and not only that, and, it, and yeah. the, the slight tangent just to get into this, because I yeah. do want to ask a little about, bit about it, but we're going to go back to how this works up to sculpture. But, yeah, mm-hmm. so it's not only that. It's that you've been working as a tailor for, I want to say, uh, uh, basically NBC, uh, you know, a lot of NBC shows. And uh, Jim Henson, mm-hmm. I believe, was one of the mm-hmm. things that... <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And so, like, you you probably have to build a lot of weird things. It's not just like, hey, can you tailor this suit? It's like, hey, we okay. need a suit with octopus arms or something, you know, yeah. it, something like that. So, but uh, but I did want to well, acknowledge, yes, you've, you've done a lot of weird things. But, but, like, I mean, there's so many parallels to this for me. Um, and I've kind of, I've always seen this. And I've had some, like, you know, well-meaning, but uh, well-meaning, but persistent mentors that are like, this is too much. Like this, these things don't work together. And like, you know, you're going to get burnt out and all this stuff. And I'm just like, no, 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 you guys, like I need both of these realms to think fully through my, you know, my creative world. Um, Because yes, like sometimes it's a suit with, with octopus arms, but also (laughs) it's like, it's like it, it, it's also doing like the most fine, like, like hand work to make it look like, nothing has ever happened. You know right, what I mean? right, right. It's like, you know, there's also a patience and like, like us, you know, a change of pace to slow down and like tailor something perfectly as if like, it's always been that way, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, so there's sort of a, there's sort of like a pace spectrum in that world too, where it's like, sometimes it's big and gestural and it's bright and it's, you know, made out of like foam and, and it's huge and it's, huge and wonky and, and crazy, but sometimes it's like for, you know, it's a, it's the, it's like the finest like hand uh, work on a, like a suit jacket, you know? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. It's, I mean, to me, it's, it's the same, like 
you know, a, a lot of people don't don't have that perspective, but to me, it really is the same because it's like you need the same kind of delicacy and mm-hmm. attention um, to get to both places. Mm-hmm. And I, frankly, I also like getting to both places. Um, <laughs> like, I, I really enjoy it. Like, I I'm just as happy, kind of. Uh, building like a couture gown as I am making like this insane, maybe like obscene creature out of foam. <laughs> 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 and I get and, and like I I don't know I feel super lucky that I get to I get to dabble in both of those those um you know those extremes and the whole gamut in between. Yeah, um, and well, and this goes to uh, the next thing that I was going to ask uh, about the transition from the other types of sculpture you were doing to the ceramic sculpture, because mm-hmm. there's also a piece in between that and some of your newer work that knowing that you had worked with, uh, I, would it be fabrics, textiles? Like how do, what's the proper term for working with fabric? Um, it, frankly, it's it sort of, I mean, in the fine art world, it's like fibers and textiles. Okay. Like in the costume world, it's garment. It's, it's, okay. um, so it depends. It really is like if it's on the body, if it's not on the body. But then oh. at the same time, those expectations and those those sort of assumptions get bucked all the time, you know? <laughs> well, and, that, and then let me digress even one more. Because when you started out, and I've actually talked to other people who have worked with different mediums, and you said you were a um, uh, mixed uh, – shoot, now I'm even forgetting the term because – I, I mixed media be, just because like you do it, say mixed media okay because yeah because other do. people say uh um, oh, great now i can't think of it so never mind but there's there's another term that have, have, has been used and i'm like oh is mixed media a old term and, and i just wanted to check that i'm using the proper one because you know well, i always like to learn i mean I think, <laughs> I think those um i think those titles are are breaking down even like they have started to break down, breaking down even more. And like, I was just reading an article this morning. It's just like multidisciplinary practices. That was like, the word multidisciplinary. It's just, yeah. It's, it's, it's just the norm now, you okay. know, and it's, and it's, and it's okay. And if anything beyond that, it's like a, it's a beautiful thing to have this spectrum of mediums, expressions, um, object, you know, deliverables, like things that are put yeah. out into the world that are just like, this really express like the diversity of people's perspectives and okay. the facets of who they are. Um, but mixed and media and really, multidisciplinary, you're saying they can both be applied to the same thing. I mean, I think that that's the way I think. Or I mean, that's what it. I'm I mean, asking. I, mean, I guess, I guess I'm not yeah. saying, you know, yeah. you're, you need to tell me now. No, it's, I, I'm just yeah. curious. Uh, Cause I want to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. Um, yeah, for sure. And then, and then also, so now going back to what I was originally trying to say. So when you started working with sculpture, there's a porcelain piece that you have, and I swear, until I saw, so, until I looked at the description of it, I thought it was a, a what would it be like a uh, polka dot bikini top, <laughs> and it's a porcelain piece. It's in oh, I don't know funny. if it's the way it's taken, but I was just like, oh my, I I, I would have sworn it was fabric, and yeah, it's actually I- a. It's it's porcelain. It says on your Instagram page, and I was I, that was yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, that's really it's really interesting because I think you're referring to this series that's pretty new that I'm I'm like really in the in the, in the meat of like exploring right now. Yeah. Where I'm really kind of letting form be very ambiguous for quite a long time. Okay. But like to the point where like I don't I'm I have things in the kiln right now that I don't know what they're gonna look like. <laughs> <laughs> and. And I love that, honestly. It's like I need this sort of like looseness in this practice to uh, kind of meet the like very tight repetition and weaving and like uh, pattern development mm-hmm. uh, in in other parts of my practice, right? And so it's like I need this sort of vacillation between order and chaos. Okay. Um, and I think that probably speaks to me <laughs> in my temperament um, is that like I need a little chaos in my life. And okay. so like to open up my practice in a sort of um, in like the object through literally the objects that I'm building and like relinquishing to like environmental factors, basically like things out of my control. Um, it feels great. It feels really, really good. And um I don't know. I think there's just like, that's like a a tremendous like learning space for me. Like I'm learning about my work as it's sort of, as I let it go into places where I'm not touching it, like a kiln. 
um, or like just literally like rephotographing things and like turning them on their sides hmm. or finding a balance point in some of these um, new sculptures that you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, that I wasn't expecting, um, but I was expecting to it for for the unknown for that kind of unknown to emerge yeah um and that that just i don't know i think that that will continue to generate questions about um objects and our relation our body's relationship to them and frankly just like media like materials and just create just sort of like a broader like approach to putting things in the world that will like I will never have enough lifetimes to explore all of these questions, you know? And that's, I don't know, like, that's just like an incredible gift. um, I think of art making it just to kind of be able to like relate to the things that you're making. Um, And I need some unknown space in that. Like I, you know, I, I have deviated from design for a reason. Um, I like being able to kind of collaborate and, I know and know that I don't have the answers. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this way, and kind of in a similar way, it's like in my tailoring space, like I'm, th- I'm collaborating with a team mm-hmm. in this way, I'm setting up my own team. <laughs> right. I'm setting up my outside other factors so that I can like kind of um, have this conversation a back and forth um, between uh, like a kiln or, you know, a shape that changes or um, yeah, or just, just different I need more. This is like a stimulus that yeah. like helps push, um, push where the work is going. Well, and the opportunity that you got to go out to Montana for, first of all, how yeah. long are you there for, uh, to, um, to do this? Yeah, I'm here for the summer. Okay. So I've been here since the, uh, I'm going to end up spending about 10 weeks out here. Okay. The couple hiatuses. Now, when did um, opportunities like this start happening? Um, it's, oof. it's one thing to be able to create, but also to, find ways to have it backed or find ways to have it be something that is supported for a certain length of time. Like when did this start happening for you? Like I, I know everybody would love to know how, how, how does, how does it become something where you get hired to do a thing just because you're doing your thing? Mm, this is an interesting <laughs> word that you just used. You use the word hired. I am not an employee. Good point. I did not say hired. hired. Get the opportunity <laughs> to create yeah, what you're doing. So- you're right. You're right. So I would say like the way that I would describe this is that, um, so it's, it's a pursuit of opportunity. Um, I am not at the point in my career, hopefully sometime in the future where I'm invited to, um, I'm I'm simply invited to a space to make my work. Um, right now I'm pursuing, um, there's just, I mean, there's just like an incredible diversity of places to make work outside of your own studio. And like what you get there is yes, you get your studio time, you get some peace, maybe, uh, maybe depending on the environment, um, but you also get a community. Um, and for me, it's really important to me right now to kind of like be building this network of people who are um, kind of in a similar like like-minded kind of generative, creative, uh, exploring phase. Um, but and then you know, and then you get this resource of time and space um, to be on relatively uninterrupted, um, but, and, and, and do your own work. Um, so I'm pursuing these things and there, you know, there's, there's a whole circuit of like open calls and residency applications that just are happening all of the time. Mm -hmm. And it just, I, like, all I can say is that like my motivation for it is to like put myself in places that I will kind of set myself up to succeed, I guess, Mm -hmm. knowing what success means for me in the studio, which is like being terribly, like incredibly inspired by the places I'm in being surrounded by generous, incredible creative people. Um, and then also getting to share my, myself, what I'm doing, like my perspective, I have a pretty untraditional background as an artist. Um, yes, I went to art school. Yes. I went to graduate school. Um, but I've taken a pretty, um, a pretty meandering path. Um, my practice has always been like, is always been going. It's been like the last 15 years, but mm-hmm. I have stepped into like other careers. I have a side career, you know, like ongoing. Um, like I chose to tailor instead of teach, you know, right. <laughs> which is like maybe a more, more traditional path for some artists for like practicing artists. Yeah. Artists. Um, 
So, so, but, but to your question specifically, it is about pursuing these opportunities. Um, right. And it's really just about making work and then getting it in the world. Like I have a pretty profound interest to like share what I'm doing. Um, just like with the most humility I possibly can, but I'm excited about it. So I mm-hmm. hope other people are excited about it. Um, and I, I don't know, I think this like also it's like a bit novel what I'm doing, um, kind of combining a, a, set, a few mediums in different ways. Um, and I, I don't know, like I, I also want to be able to like be a resource for people too, um, to like have these experiences and like invite people you know, and then have people feel like because they know me or because they know my work that like, you're, you're welcome here too. You know, yeah. you're welcome here too. This is possible. Um, if I can do it, like you can do it. Um, and there's space for everyone to kind of pursue, um, what they're, what they're working on. Yeah. And do you find these opportunities through, um, networking or you, you know, you just research them? Like what's, I, I guess, how yeah, would you find them? Yeah, at this them? point it's, it's still, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm networking a little bit. Like I, you know, I, I all I want to do is like make work with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Like, right. I know. <laughs> um, so, so like that, that's important, but I, but it really is, um, also like kind of making friends with organizations. Like you got to kind of put yourself out there and reach out to them and put, you know, put your application forward, get your, get eyes on your work. Yeah. Um, whoever those eyes might be. And, you know, uh, I, I like a lot of people, you know, this, this it can get a little bit of a gr- in, turn into a bit of a grind to like keep applying for stuff, get rejected, keep applying, get rejected <laughs> every once in a while. Hopefully you'll get a win. But like I, my perspective on that, this that whole part of the practice, which it is a it is a whole part <laughs> of the sort of like administrative side of running your studio. Yeah. Um. I think there's still, there's so much to be gained, even from, you know, what seems like a rejection or seems like a, like a kind of like loss, Mm -hmm. because I get to think about my work in a different way. I get to like revisit the way I talk about it, the way I'm like presenting to someone who's never seen it. Um, the way, so my language, the language development for me happens continually through just writing and rewriting. Um, and then, you know, I get to put my hat in a ring whoever's evaluating it or whoever is in those organizations will see it, maybe recognize my name, maybe remember me, maybe not, but still like I've, I've done my part, you know, to kind of like be in the world and be part of um, the broader art world, the broader community of creative people doing things in the world. And um, that feels like a worthwhile effort, even if like the outcome isn't what I want or something like that. Like it's just the, it's sort of the beginning of like, who you want your future friends to be or who you think are cool, like who you think is cool, like genuinely like appreciate like other people who are doing awesome stuff, you know, and in like be by being a little bit brave and like putting yourself in a space that, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? Truly. It's like, they know or they're just like, I think that all the time. Yeah. I'll be just like, Oh, is this dumb? And then it's just like, I don't know. I'll find out later. Like, you know, I I won't find out if it's dumb if I don't do anything about it. Precisely. And yeah, also it's I, online. Like, first of all, if millions of people are going to see it right away, then I'm the greatest marketer in the entire world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, yeah. usually when you put it out there, maybe a few people see it and then they forget about it and then you can yeah. take it down. Like it's, so that's what it comes yeah. down to me. For me, it's just like, I can always just delete it offline if, if I yeah. need to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I feel like that's, that can get really crippling sometimes. Yeah. I'm just like, Oh, I don't know. Or, or like, you know, how this is going to be received or whatever. It's just like the least, like the most scarce resource that anybody has these days is attention. And mm-hmm. like, and I, I think it can, I don't know if you can be brave enough to like direct your attention in a place, like people often recognize that. Um, and then if it's like reciprocated, it like, I don't know, it doesn't, it feels really like, like, warm and personal like those yeah. kinds of things and like i don't want to be too like i don't i know i don't need to be too vulnerable on the internet or something but like right. i but but i think it still is even in the digital space like um or like uh correspondence space like these kinds of things it's just like people recognize how extractive like those those things can be and so just knowing that it means that you're putting yourself you are putting yourself 
in, like into that effort, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and um, I don't know. I feel like there, there's a kinder, gentler internet maybe on the way, hopefully. Yeah. No, <laughs> Just and- because like we've seen like how, you know, like this like, specifically, like, you know, we can see how we can connect in ways that we never could have possibly imagined. And like the, you, my world is richer and better and one more wonderful because of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Right. Yeah. And also on top of that, you, uh, you have a website and I know a lot of people, they struggle with like, should I have a website? Do I, do I need yeah. a website and all that? And you do, and yeah. you keep it updated. And, um, mm-hmm. you also have the, and like, how are you promoting yourself to get the mm-hmm. word out there? Uh, in one way being the website and the other way, I know you're on Instagram. So tell me what are some of the ways that you're promoting your work? Yeah. Um, so my website is Kate Um, pretty straightforward. Um, that's always a sort of work in progress, but I think it is important to kind of have your, have a landing page. Um, I think artists specifically, um, you don't have to, you don't have to bear your soul. You don't have to bear every single thing you've ever done. Right. But if there's something you're excited about, like your current body of work, put it out there. Um, people want to know about you, you know, um, in, you know, best case scenario. And that's usually the case. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my website is just sort of a landing pad. I update it relatively frequently um it needs a little update right now but um, <laughs> but then uh but then i mean social media is i've i've kind of again sort of switched my perspective on it too in the same way as like writing and um applying for things uh if you engage in it in a social way and you're not just like doom scrolling or you're just like mindlessly scrolling like which is too extractive for my attention and like my brain um if you're actually like talking to people it's awesome. Like mm-hmm. I've made some like new cool friends and I've learned about artists who are making awesome things in the world. Um, and just sort of had like, like just generous, like cute exchanges of like, I really dig your work. It's like, I really dig your work. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> That's it. Have a great day. And then maybe, I don't know, sometime in the future, like we will have a reference point on each other and like, I'll see their work out in the world at a gallery or they'll see yeah. mine. And like, you know, that's, it, I don't know. I think that's a way to kind of like weave creative people together and we need each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it is not like an option to kind of have your network of other artists. Like you need them. Like you need studio visits. You need to talk about your work. Even if you don't know what to say, you need to have eyes on your work by other people. And then sometimes you do have like burning questions of like, I don't know what to do here. I'm stuck. Come over or call me. I need to show you this, like, and it's okay to kind of like all that whole gamut of just, um, just having conversations about the work keeps, keeps me, keeps, I think artists in the work, um, keeps your brain like really, you know, diving into like even deeper subterranean levels of like what you're doing. Um, but then it's, I don't know. And, and and you can't, you can't ex, like under I I can't understand like the outcomes of those things and don't think about them that way but mm-hmm. it's just I know that I get to connect with another person who has like some insight into like not necessarily my whole practice but like their practice and I learn about I learn about me through them I learn oh, about yeah. them through them um and just it's 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 just um it's just super super generative yeah and one of the other things I saw too on your website is that you have uh, you you also are actually selling fabrics on there, and I was curious about that. You have oh. a, you have a <laughs> store that has um, yeah. I, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. One was like fabric fashions, or uh, it, it's um, there is one series for sale, um, and it's sort of like an archival thing. I, uh, yeah, I wanted to know about that. Court. It's it's really cool looking, but what is it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's like an archival body of work there from uh, like you know about like probably like eight years ago and it's called fast fashion. Fa- fast there you go. Fashion That's what it was. Landscapes. Um, and it was a time in which I like, didn't really have like a studio, um, like a, you know, a concentrated studio. I was sort of working from my apartment and, um, but I, you know, was working in the garment industry, um, in the entertainment industry. And like, there's just so much waste <laughs> mm-hmm. in that, that, those productions basically. And, um, knowing you know as a builder of of garment as a, as a practitioner like knowing how much energy how much embodied energy yeah. like how many hands animals landscapes have touched something for it to then have a whole small hole in it and dumped mm-hmm. <laughs> um 
uh, literally as if it was like a paper towel. It is not, you know, yeah. it's just, it's mind boggling to me. So like I started collecting like um, wool sweaters, cashmere sweaters, um, and um, make ass- making these sort of like assembled um, compositions. Um, and a lot of times they're like sort of monochromatic, but it's cutting, it's literally cutting around the holes. It's um, re-fortifying the materials by like felting, like making making the composition, which is sort of like, a, it becomes like kind of a blanket. They're functional. Yeah, like, it even kind of looks want- like a mosaic a little bit in some of the yeah, pieces, you know? I, yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. Toggled like a lens, toggled like a mosaic, but it's also, if you like think about, you know, when you're looking out the airplane window, this is what the patchwork of our country oh. looks like. Too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Like, I see. I know yeah. that now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is the way I like see the everyday world. It's like the micro to the yeah. macro and the way that those patterns reinforce each other and are just like present, um, in in so much of our life like the patterns on the inside of like our vascular system are the same mm-hmm. way that rivers meander over a landscape as seen from above right and so I, that that to me is just like a magical part of just like being alive on this planet <laughs> nice um but yeah so but that series like it's it's i maybe have a one or two of them in me when it, it through you know in the future of my life um, it's just sort of an ongoing series to like catch waste that doesn't have a place and like remember how beautiful these materials are and how much labor and love has gone into these, um, into these objects. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so like there's, yeah, there's a few things that are, that are still available in that series right now. Um, yeah, I thought it was fascinating. And once again, yeah. proving you work with many different, <laughs> different <laughs> things <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that curiosity for materials is like it's it's always been in me like it's just always been a part of the way i see the world and the way i see making and skill and like skill building i just i i can't get enough of just like diving into the the way different materials move and perform and like are able to do certain things and not do other things and and just like kind of find like you know if there's like right tool right job it's sort of like right material right use Mm -hmm. according to me you know i get to make rules (laughs) (laughs) and then uh one more thing what are some of the things that uh you have coming up that you'd like to tell people about or uh, projects that you have that are going to be out soon that you'd like people to know about that would be so great. I'm not sure when we're going to release this. Mm-hmm. Um, this but- here will probably be released. Uh, oh, probably just in in a week. Oh, fabulous! Okay, um, I am going to be uh, open having a public sculpture opening um, at Socrates Sculpture Park. Okay, at the end of September on September 30th, there'll be a big party outside in this beautiful park in Queens. Um, working on that project right now. Okay. Um, it's one of these like big, it, it's one of these aluminum constructions um, that are made of blinds and riveted together, but it's going to be massive. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a scale up, um, a massive scale up in that series and that body of work um, that I'm just so thrilled and feel so lucky to get to install in my, my neighborhood park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that is by no means why I was selected, but I feel very, very lucky to have been um, selected to be a fellow at Socrates this year. Um, I will also be having a solo show in June of next year um, out in Bellingham, Washington at Geheim Gallery, which I'm thrilled about, which I know is like so far away from now, but like, I'm just, like, I couldn't be happier. I just love the gallery so much. And yeah. um, the work is, you know, starting, like, I can start to tune my brain um, to um, that exhibition. So. Okay. And then if people wanted to check out more of your work, where would you suggest that they see it? Sure. Um, I would say most actively, my Instagram is the Kate Russick. It's a little obnoxious, but that's where we are uh, uh, on Instagram. And um, my website is katerussick.com. I like that you have the Kate Russick because that happens to me all the time. I will go to get a domain name or something and it's already taken. So I just put the in front of it. It's so, uh, yeah, I have several sites that are that way. <laughs> oh, awesome. awesome. Why, I mean, why do you think this website is common. called Tom Ray's website.com? Because Tom Ray.com was taken. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. It was great. Oh my God, Tom, thank you so much for this opportunity. It was great chatting with you. Thank you.